In my last video, I received a request asking how would you actually post data to the server using the authenticated user that you would have uh, logged in at the time. So in this video, we're gonna demonstrate how to do that. And on top of that, we're gonna actually post to a database and save a record that's associated to a user. So let's go ahead and get started. To start with, we're gonna go into our schema file and we're gonna add a new model for post. So we're gonna say model post. And then inside of here, we're gonna have that ID. Uh, and then we're gonna have a couple of extra fields. We're gonna have title, which is gonna be a string. And then we're gonna have body, which is also gonna be a string. Uh, we're gonna have user ID, which is gonna be a string. And then that user ID needs to be associated to something. So if we come up here to session, we can kind of see how we have user ID. And then we have this column right here, user or this row right here, user, and it has this relationship. This states that basically this user ID field right here is associated to the ID on the user column. So we can go ahead and paste this here. A couple other things would be nice to have is create an updated at. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this down here and save. That's gonna pretty pretty fi it for us. And so now we can actually run the migration. So if I do MPX Prisma Migrate Dev, we can actually call this something. So we'll say add post model. And so that will add the post model for us and we should be good to go. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna add an actual post endpoint or post endpoint. So if I come up here and I create a new file in the API, we're gonna call it post.js. And then inside of here, if we look at the API routes, you can kind of see how this is gonna work. We actually have like a handler that we return. So I'm gonna uh, return this handler and then I'm gonna just return this for the post itself. And we can kind of test this out and see how this works. So to start with, I'm gonna open up uh, something called Postman and Postman allows you to actually post stuff on the fly. So if I hit send here for post, uh, actually I have to run the server first. If I hit yarn dev and then over here, I hit send, we'll see this name John Doe, which is what we have here. Now, in order to add some sort of session management here, we have this handy thing called get session that you can get from uh, import from um, next auth slash client. And so all this takes is the uh, request itself. And so what we really need to do is it, it returns, it's an async function. So we really need to actually have async await here. We can say const session is equal to await session and then add that request. And so I can console.log out this session to see what's happening here. And so if I console.log that out and I hit send here, you'll see it's null right now. And the reason being is this postman is not actually logged in in any way. There's no tokens being sent back and forth. But if I come over here to my local host and I sign in with GitHub, and then I'm gonna go back into the index file and this is where the sign out is. So this is where this part of the UI is. I'm gonna create a button in here. And inside of that button, we're gonna say uh, get session. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And then on click, we're gonna have a fetch function. So we're gonna say fetch. We know that it's gonna be API slash posts and then Additionally, on top of that, we know that we want the method to be post or yeah, method to be post. So method post here. And so now if I hit get session, you'll see that my session appears down below because that's what we're console logging out. You can see the user, you can see the access token, you can see the expiration of that access token. So that's great. We have a really awesome way of sending to the server our authenticated user and understanding who that person is. So the next step is actually figuring out on the server end, like how would you actually figure out the user in the database? Because right now it doesn't give us that information. We do know that the email is unique. So what we can do is we can actually use Prisma in here itself. And I could basically just import the Prisma client. So import uh, Prisma client. Uh, from at Prisma slash client. And so now we have the Prisma client, we can actually uh, initiate that. So I can say const Prisma is equal to new Prisma client. And then inside of here, we can actually like check to see if there's a session. So if there is a, actually we can say if there's no session, maybe we want to always return some sort of way of letting someone know that, hey, 
you obviously don't have a session, so let's just return a 401. So res.status is 401. And then we can say that the JSON that we're gonna return is just unauthorized. And we'll say true. So that way we know that, hey, this user can't use this right now. So the next thing that we need to do is only inside of the post, because that's all we care about right here, we want to authenticate that the user is valid. Uh, so we can say const user, and then we just want to await a Prisma uh, query for user, and we're going to say find unique. And inside of here, we're going to have our where, and this is where we actually specify the email. So we can say where email is equal to, and we already have that session, right? So we can say session dot, and it's user dot email. So now we can verify that this user actually exists. And so if I console.log out that user right here, we should receive a Prisma model for the user if I hit get session. And there it is right there. So now we have the ID of the user, the name, the email, whether it's verified or not, and the image for the avatar. But the more important thing here is we have the ID that we can associate with. So now we can actually start doing some fun stuff, for example, creating a post. Uh, so let's go back to our index file and let's create like a simple form here that we can use. So I'm going to create a form. Uh, looks like, hold on one second. Let's do it inside the button so it doesn't mess up the uh, JSX form. There we go. So then let's move that outside of the button, post it here. And then we're going to have uh, an input actually two inputs, we're gonna have, actually let's do input and uh, text area. And so the input is going to be for a title and then the text area is gonna be for body. And so like you would normally do, we can use set state. So I can say up here, import use state from react. And so I can say, const, uh, let's see, title, set title is equal to use state. I make that an empty string to start with. Same thing with body. So I can say body, capitalize this body. And so that way we can say on change down here. We can have our on change handler. And all it's going to do is say set title with e.target.value. Same thing with the text area on change set body with e.target.value. And so now we can actually just, if we wanted to do a simple thing, we could say title and body here. And you can actually see when I type them out, they get presented next to each other. So we don't need that. Let's go ahead and add some divs around here. We can add labels as well if we wanted to. I could say, you know, label. And then we could say, this is gonna be the title. And then same thing down here. We can say div label. lowercase l, oh, come on, lowercase l, and then this is gonna be body. So it's not pretty, but that's what we have. And also let's go ahead and add a button for the submit. So submit, and then for the form, we want to be, uh, we need a form handler. So we need a on submit in here. And then this is going to be an anonymous function. We'll have e, uh, and then we'll have uh, e dot prevent default to prevent the refresh, and so we should be able to console dot log out whatever title and body is in here. So now if I just type in here, I hit submit. There's the two values. So now we can actually pass them to the server if we want. In order to do that, let's go back to our fetch request. We can actually just copy it from up here and remove this button. We won't need that anymore for the get session. I can just post this right here. And then we just need a uh, body that we're gonna post back to. And we can say json.stringify that body. And we're gonna have title and body. 
there. So if we go back to our index file or our post file, we should be able to uh, figure out what that is by doing request.body. We should actually get the information from it. So let's just do console.log request.body there. And then if I hit submit, we'll see title and body are there. Looks like the, there we go. It looks like it uh, saved the state between that. So there we go, test and body. So we probably want to guard right here as well. So we can say if the request.body.title and or actually or request.body.body are not there, then we probably want to do some sort of 500 status or some sort of error. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this up here and I'm just going to do 500 and then we're going to say that error validate validation error or something like that. Validation error. That way the server or the client side knows, okay, this doesn't work for us. The next thing we can do is we can actually save that post. So if I say const post equals await uh, prisma dot post dot create, and then we can actually just add that data in there. Now we should be able to say, we want that user ID, right? We want to associate the user. So we can say user dot ID because we have that now. And now we can do something like title is going to be request.body.title and then uh, body is the same thing request.body.body and so that will actually return our posts so now at the very end we can remove this John Doe and we can say something like if we have a post ID so that means the post actually saved and that's validated we can say res.status is going to be 200 and then we're just going to return back that JSON of the post. So we have that post information to post somewhere or to put somewhere. Uh, else, we're going to basically just return back a 500 again. Something like, hey, there's going to be an error somewhere. I don't know what happened. Something went wrong. So we can just say something went wrong. So there we go. And what would be really nice is to actually move this out into a nice little helper function. So I'm going to say async function uh, create post, which is going to take the request and the response. And so what we can do is all of this stuff right here. We can just remove this. Uh, let's see. We don't need this if statement anymore. Actually, let's keep the if statement and we'll just delete it out from under us and up here. So we don't need the if statement in here anymore. And then down here in the handler, we can say if that is that, we can just say uh, return create post, passing in the request and the response. Now, technically, we probably don't even need this async function. It would still work without it. Uh, actually, I guess you need the await. Uh, so you do. Oh, so there's create post. This one doesn't need the async function anymore. So now we should still be able to run this. So I'm going to type in here, type in here, hit submit. Uh, let's see, we have an internal error. Let's go to network and see what happened. Post preview validation error. Okay, so we do get an error, but why do we get that error? So let's console.log out what request.body is. Okay. Hmm. Let's console.log that out again. Uh, remove that so we can kind of see what's going on here. Those are typed true if there's no body or there's no title. Undefined, undefined. Interesting.
request.body.title. You know what it is? It's probably, it needs to be stringified. So I need to come in here and say uh, headers. I need to come in there and say headers, content type. is equal to application slash JSON. It's, it's probably not a JSON object right now. It looks like it down there in the console, but it's probably not. Uh, let's see, we also need this right there. And so now if I type in here and hit submit, there we go, now we got what we want. So uh, if I come back here, that'll actually work. And so if I actually look at our database and I refresh, you'll see that it actually saved it saved the ID and it saved the user ID. And if I click here, you'll see that user ID was me. So it worked. So you can do a lot more with this. You could add a uh, proper validation on the front end with this whenever it submits. And I don't have, for instance, the body that's going to return the va that validation error that we were wanting. And we can actually show that, show that in the UI. I think right now that's enough for this video, but if you have any comments, questions, you like this video, please subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.